Okay, this little joint here is a good opportunity to show you some other things about polymodeling. Let's start by just making a circle. That's simple enough. Let's go to the top view, kind of place that where we want it. By the way, I just used T as my top view hotkey, which is default, instead of hitting my view cube up here. So you can always do that as well. Set this in place and then extrude it. So we have a nice little piece of geometry there. Doesn't really matter how much we extrude because we're going to convert to edit poly anyway. Right click, convert to edit poly. Now we can drag these wherever we want. Now one thing I want to show you is a turbo smooth. We're going to end up turbo smoothing this object. You'll have to bear with me a little bit. The geometry likes to disappear when I'm recording my screen as well. It has some display problems. Okay. So what we're going to do, let's isolate this. Alt-Q or the button down here isolates. Okay, if we select this and then hit ring, that selects all those all the way around this ring. And then we can use the connect tool. We can connect it twice and we can spread it out or slide it. In this case, we want to spread it out towards the edges. Like that. Now, when we put a turbo smooth on, it's going to look something like that. Turbo smooth will smooth between this line and this midpoint of this circle here. So actually, that's not exactly what we want. We want to take this face and this face and inset it like that. So that now when we turbo smooth, it will smooth between here and here. It will basically round off that corner like that. That looks a little better. We still have some issues going on in here, which we'll address. But the important thing is that turbo smooth We'll use the edges that you put in, we call this an edge loop here, to decide how to round corners for you. So just as an example, we'll take this edge, select loop, and it will loop that all the way around instead of ring, which would be this, okay, loop, and let's slide it in like this. Now go to Turbo Smooth and see what happens. It doesn't look much different, but it is. If we go to this view here, you'll see on this side where we slid that thing, it's a nice gradual curve. And over here, it's a tight corner. So depending on where you put that edge, Turbo Smooth will do different things. Let's keep that in mind as we move forward. Turbo Smooth is an important tool because it's how we smooth out our meshes to make them look more organic and realistic. Okay, now here, we need to add some shape to this object. So what we're gonna do is come up, make sure both faces are selected and we'll do an extrude on it. Actually, let's do a bevel. So we come out and then we let off and then it gives us the opportunity to drag in or out. That's the difference between bevel and extrude. Something like that. Then let's inset both of them and then bevel it in. Now that shape might not be exactly what the picture looks like, but that's okay because we don't know what the picture looks like we only have that one view of it. So this is just fine. And then from here, let's extrude. And inset. And remember, this is all happening on the other side too, because it's selected. And then extrude in. And then let's just delete that face. Actually, no, let's not delete that face. Let's inset it. Just like that. And I'll show you why we do that. OK, 
Okay, now let's turn on our Turbo Smooth again. Let's see what we got. Okay, we have a very smooth looking shape, but it's not exactly right. So this is again where we have to go in and tur tell Turbo Smooth where we want some hard edges at. And we do that by adding edge loops. So let me show you a cool tool. It's up here in the graphite tools. We find those by hitting this toggle ribbon button and you might have them showing already. This is the ribbon. If yours is off, hit this button here. And if it's on, then you're good to go. So in here you have all these modeling tools. The one we're gonna look at, and th these are all modeling tools for polygons. So exactly what we're doing right now. There's these loop tools, ring tools. The one we're gonna look at is the Swift Loop. Okay. Swift Loop is an awesome tool because instead of selecting all these edges and hitting connect, it's just making the loop for you automatically. So like I said, we need to tell Turbo Smooth where to make hard edges. Right now, Turbo Smooth, let's go out of Swift Loop. Turbo Smooth, Turbo Smooth is smoothing that entire edge right there from this point to this point over here. It's just making a big arc because there's no other edges there to tell it not to do that. So we're going to add some edges using the Swift Loop because it's really easy this way. So if we put one here, we'll immediately now have a harder edge right here. But on the inside, we have this really soft edge. So on the inside, let's go back to Swift Loop. Make another edge there. Even make an edge here and here like that. Now it will be more like a chamfered edge, just like this right here. So now we have hard edges here and on the outside. So if you want a hard edge, then you add more edge loops in there. If you want a soft edge like in here, then you don't add any edges in there. Okay, so we need to decide how we want this to look and then add edges accordingly. I think we need an edge here and here. We already have this edge. This one will be rounding from this point to that point. Now this one will do a nice little rounded edge from this point to that point. This whole thing's gonna be rounded and then I think we need to put an edge here and here like that. See how that looks? Okay, so we just added this hard edge. This is all a nice soft edge right there. It's looking pretty good. You see we've got some weird things going on inside here. That's gonna be hidden so it's not a big deal. But the reason that is is because we don't really have clean geometry in there all these faces or all these points are just going and then ending. And so this is not a quad face, a face with four sides. This face has, you know, 30 sides, one, two, three, all the way around. So when you're modeling like this, you want to try to keep everything as quads, four sided polygons, but sometimes like this, it's just not going to matter. So we can, we can just leave this here and we're going to hide it with the piece that fits into here. You can also delete this edge like that. And then everything is quads again. One thing we want to do, I'm going to put that face back. One thing we do want to do is clean up this edge in here by using the Swift Loop again. Oops, Swift Loop. Let's get that nice and crisp. And then I showed you how we inset that and now there'll be a nice turbo smooth from this edge to that edge. We'll see it here, just like that. Okay, that's a pretty clean little object. Now, all those edges we added, we're not adding on this side. So what do we do? There's a cool little tool. It's actually a modifier. We'll put it before the turbo smooth, but after the edit poly. We'll go to the modifier list, go down, and what we're looking for is symmetry. You'll see these two arrows. The symmetry, the line of symmetry is right in the center here with uh, this side and this side being mirrored upon each other. So we actually want a different line of symmetry in the Z axis. Okay, now it's mirroring this way. And we can go into the sub object of symmetry, go to the mirror point, and then just move it like any other sub object. 
and make sure we're mirroring the right side. So the side with all the edges is this one. We want to make sure that's mirroring to this side. And it is. So that's perfect. You probably want to make sure that the points in the center that it's now creating are welded together, welding the seam. At a threshold of 330 seconds, that means any, any vertice that's in with, within 330 seconds of another will weld together and become an enclosed polygon. So that's a good practice to always make sure things are welded. Okay, there you go. Now after the turbo smooth is applied, now both sides match, just like that. And we've got that little piece. Let's unisolate. There we go, there's our little piece for the center. One more thing I wanna to do to it, so let's isolate one more time. Go to the top view. Now we only have to do things on one side now because we have a symmetry going on. Let's take that swift loop tool one more time. Cut a loop in right here, and now let's chamfer it like so. Then go into face mode, select all these faces, make sure we're in window, not crossing. Window, make a window around all those. Now we can extrude. Make sure instead of extruding, extruding by group, we extrude by local normal. Okay, that means each face will be extruding perpendicular to itself, which is what we want. And we'll just extrude it in like that. This is making the little joints so that this thing can be articulating. Okay, now what's going to happen if we put a turbo smooth on that? It's not going to look right. Notice. Way too smoothed out, not exactly what we want. So let's go back to edge mode real quick. Hit F4 to make sure our edges are showing. Go to Swift Loop. Let's add a tight, tight edge right there. And right there, just really, really tight to our other edges to make just a fine corner. Now, remember down here, you'll have to do the same thing. And there. And there. Okay, now another way to do that would have been to take this, loop it, and then chamfer it. That would have given you the edges you need too, but I'm just showing you different techniques here. So turbo smooth it now, and we should have a hard edge. Okay, there we go. Nice thing is with the symmetry, we only had to do it once. So there's a little piece. Let's move on to the next part of the model.